Hey guys, welcome back to the Franklin Forge. In today's video, we're gonna be covering five tips that I wish I knew when I got started making blades. In today's video, got my good friend Jason Lau with Tavern Hill Blades. He's gonna be assisting in some of these tips and covering some of the things that we both wish we knew when we got started. So with that, let's cover tip number one. All right, the first tip and probably one of the more important ones of the five that we're gonna give is something that um, I wish I had early on and that is a pretty simple one and that is slow down. Um, I, I understand that whether you're a woodworker or a knife maker or anything like that, it's very easy to get excited about a project and you end up rushing a lot of aspects of it and you end up you know, with a finished product that isn't exactly what you imagined. Slow down, take your time with each step. If it takes you two or three days to forge a blade out or finish a handle, it's fine. So just slow down and you're gonna end up with a much better piece. And this is number two. All right, tip number two uh, that took me a while and uh, to figure out and it was told to me by my mentor and it kind of goes along with slowing down and that is design. And design is critical no matter what you're making. Early on, I found myself just grabbing a piece of steel, had the design in my head, and then trying to hammer it out and getting frustrated because I could never get close to my design. It's really important to take your time with a piece of paper and a pencil and draw your design out. And that's gonna allow you to understand the lines. It just really helps solidify it in your mind. It's like, um, if you write something down, you remember it easier than if you, if you just think it up. But if you write it down, it creates that connection to your brain and you're able to do it. I've got it on paper and I can always refer back to that. That's my master. I can change it if I want to, but that's the whole point of drawing out is because I make all my changes, I come to my final product, and then um, I will put tracing paper over it. I trace that out, I cut that out, and then I, I put that over onto uh, a piece of wood. You can do it in metal if you wanted to. And now you have a, a more robust template that you can take with you to the forge. So tip number two is design. It's very, very important. It goes along with hand in hand with the slowdown because you need to slow down. You need to design your knife first on paper before you actually put your steel in the forge. So tip number three is stance. Watch your stance. So what we see, uh, in, in our knife making classes is improper stance. And I think for a novice knife maker, uh, stance is everything of helping the steel uh, move faster, not creating back injuries and uh, things of that nature. So we'll look over here at Brandon. If you look at him, he's standing uh, very far from the anvil. Can't get a good swing, especially the area he's working in. Stepping up closer to the anvil, locking the tones in to the side of your leg. Of course, it's a uh, human nature to stay, stay away from hot metal. I'm not saying get right up on it, but locking your arm into your leg, a good grip on your tongs will allow you to hammer on the steel without uh, the steel moving back and forth all the time. Uh, number four in our five tips is equipment. Uh, we get asked this a lot in classes, and it literally is, what do I buy? What do I get to get started? It's important to understand when we're talking about equipment, get the best you can get when you're getting started. Now, everyone's budget is different, so get whatever fits your budget. And then from there, make your piece, sell it, save that money, and start building and building your uh, equipment up. So when I got started, I literally started with a Harbor Freight anvil, and that is perfectly fine. You start with a Harbor Freight anvil, a big chunk of steel, or a railroad uh, tie, a railroad track. Um, those are all great options when you're getting started. You're gonna quickly find that you're gonna wanna upgrade those. Um, and I know anvilers are expensive, whether they're new um, or old, you know, they're like seven to nine pounds at this time. Um, but it's worth it to save your money and get you a good anvil. That's one of the first things you really need to upgrade in your shop. It's critical to have that. You get the rebound and it's gonna give you a lot back to it. Um, your next piece of equipment on so the other side of the anvil that actually hits the steel is gonna be your hammer. You can really start with any hammer. Don't get a synthetic handle. Get a wood handle of any type. It, it doesn't matter. If you go to Harbor Freight or something like that or get a cheap one, um, you, uh, you probably wanna dress the edges. And what I mean by that is knocking the hard uh, corners down so that they're more radius and round and that's gonna leave less aggressive hammer marks in your steel and uh, you're just gonna have a much better time at it. So my first hammer was a Craftsman hammer. It was an old antique hammer. I paid seven bucks for it and it worked really good. It was a little uh, cross beam. 
Um, as soon as you can, um, do invest in a quality forging hammer. There's tons of makers out there. Um, and this is a proper square circle uh, forging hammer. It's a rounding side and a flat side. The flat side's for planishing and the round side is a reduced surface area and allows you to move steel faster. This is a very versatile tool because it's basically two hammers in one, but as soon as you can, it's, it's nice to upgrade to this or maybe even learn to forge your own. Uh, next thing is tongs. One thing you're gonna learn if you keep doing this, this craft is that you can never have enough tongs. When you're just getting started, um, I didn't know what type of tongs to buy, I didn't know anything. But I have found my most used tongs in the shop, even today with all the tongs that I have, I keep going back to these two. So I'm gonna recommend these two types of tongs um, for when you're getting started. These are just simple flat jaws. You can grab a lot of different uh, material with it. And these are um, more of a, like a wider uh, jaw. So I can grab a flat piece with this. I can grab a square, a round, or, and I can grab it in this direction too because of the different shapes. And you can find these a lot. I have a, I have a bunch of pairs that I found at um, uh, flea markets. Uh, same thing with the hammer flea markets, uh, antique stores, and you can find them for relatively uh, cheap. Definitely recommend these two styles of tongs when you're getting started because it, there's a lot of um, different things you can grab with just two sets of tongs. All right, uh, last thing is going to be your heat source. So when you're blacksmithing or knife making, you're gonna need some sort of heat source. So with a propane forge, you can build or buy your own. There's a wide range of pricing when it comes to forges. You can get them as cheap as $100 all the way up to almost $2,000. I built my own uh, for relatively cheap and I recommend using a propane forge, especially in knife making. It's really easy to control your heat and your temperatures. So you're getting started, you're probably gonna be doing most of your heat treating out of the forge and um, you wanna be able to adjust that regulator and adjust that heat so that you uh, can properly heat treat your blades. You know, upgrade your forge when you can, but if you, if you don't have the budget, you know, just get something um, simple um, off of Amazon or eBay or something like that. So to simplify it and, and kind of hit the high points of what I was just talking about, um, it's the four things that you need are an anvil, a hammer, some tongs, and a forge. That's all you need. You don't need any of these other fancy tools. You need a power hammer, press, any other equipment. Um, that's all you need to get started um, with, with uh, your forging. Tip number five, where to source your steel. Uh, that is a question I had when I got started and it's actually how I met my mentor, Jason Knight, because I sent him a message because I had no idea where to get knife steel out, high carbon steel, what we consider high carbon steel. Uh, he reached out to me and uh, we became good friends and he told me where to get my steel at. There's a bunch of different places you can get. There's different types of steel that you can get. Uh, I specifically use usually quarter inch by inch and a half. The, that can forge a lot of different things. You can break down that stock for smaller knives. You can use it for a chef's knife, a cleaver, or something like that, but that's a great size. Uh, but some of the places that I like to go, and they're very accessible, they ship fast. One is Pops Knife Supply, uh, uh, popsknifesupply.com. Uh, another one is onlinemetals.com. And then another one that I frequently purchase from is New Jersey Steel Baron. And uh, once I discovered those, like that was it. So to recap on the five tips, number one, slow down. Number two, design your knife. Number three, your stance. Number four, the equipment. And number five, where to source your material. All right, guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it very helpful. And I also want to thank my good friend Jason Lau over here with Tavern Hill Blades. Please make sure you go follow him on Instagram uh, and Facebook. He makes some awesome pieces. So once again, uh, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. And make sure you like, follow, and subscribe. Peace out.